Hi, this is David Smith from Film, Video and Virtual Reality magazine, formerly Australian Video Camera magazine. And today I'm going to talk you through the latest edition of Vasco da Gama from Motion Studios. This is Vasco da Gama version 11. And I just want to show you some of the new features and uh, step you through how easy it now is to make very, very impressive looking uh, travel videos extremely easily. So we start. We have the choice of opening the previous project, opening an existing project, or creating a new one. So we'll create a new project. And so we have the choice initially between the Easy Assist mode selected here or the Expert mode selected here where the full suite of features are available to you. But I want to show you how easy it is to use Easy Assist and create a, a very effective video very easily. So we'll start here with Easy Assist. We choose the project properties. I'm going to use the advanced map mode because that's what I want to use today. I'm going to work with high definition TV at 1080 uh, 25 progressive. Uh, that's 1920 by 1080 pixels, 25 frames per second. And the rest is as defined in the template. So here's our globe. And uh, it's important to remember when you start out, don't click on anywhere with your left mouse because wherever you do, you'll create part of the root. So don't click randomly. You'll have to go back and start again if you want to do that. And you can't actually remove the initial starting point. You have to go back and create a new project, which I'll do. So being very careful not to click anywhere just yet, we're going to create uh, the starting point for our map. So I'll go up here to this section, the travel section of the uh, window, and I'll click insert new waypoint. This will be the commencement of our trip. I'm going to start from Melbourne, Australia, my hometown. We choose Australia from the drop down list. There we go, uh, Australia. And I'll choose Melbourne Airport. And there we are at Melbourne Airport. Now I'll choose the next waypoint. And notice here that we're in stage one of the animation. This is stage one. You can have up to 10 stages of your journey. And this is important because each one can be characterized by a different vehicle or mode of transport. And we'll see how this works in a moment. But let's go up here and choose uh, a new waypoint using the GPS. I'm going to go flying across now to Perth, again Australia. There we are. And I'll go down again to Perth Airport. And here's the first stage of our trip. Now, at this point, we're seeing that the Perth Airport is highlighted green. So that's the active waypoint on the journey. And so now I'll go up to the top here, to the stages, and I'll choose now to work in, uh, I'll choose to add a new stage. So this is now stage two. Stage two, beginning here at now at Perth. Now we're going to fly by adding a new waypoint. We're going to fly to Exmouth, the submarine navigation base uh, at Exmouth in Australia, and Exmouth Western Australia is what we want. So we go to there, and this takes us right up here to Exmouth, and we've still been flying so far. We've flown stage one, we've, we will have flown stage two, and now I'm going to add a new stage because we're going to drive down, this is now stage three, starting again at the green highlighted Exmouth. And so from Exmouth, we're going to add a new stage, stage three, and this is going to be to Coral Bay, an absolutely beautiful part of the world, pristine coral reefs, 
and there it is, Coral Bay. Where the database is so extensive now in uh, Vasco da Gama. There's just so many small towns and places you can find. But here we go, Coral Bay, Western Australia. And it's in there. Now we can see it's the green highlighted termination of our journey. So let's just quickly fly through the journey. This was stage three, going from Exmouth to Coral Bay. But let's fly the whole journey and see what's happened so far. There we go, flying across to Perth. And then continuing up the coast to the middle of Western Australia, up to Exmouth, where you see the uh, humpback whales, if you're lucky, and the whale sharks, if you're even luckier. And then we come down by driving to Coral Bay, and that's the end of our trip, so it starts again. So I'll stop that, and we escape from the preview window. Now I want to do some interesting things. We want to go back to the start. So there's various ways to do this. The easiest way to go back to the start is to come down here to the navigation and view pane and click on the extreme left button, which will take us right back to the beginning. And so you can see Melbourne Airport is now highlighted green. And up here, we're in stage one. So now the fun starts. I'm going to first of all add acceleration and deceleration because I like that. It means things ramp up slowly. They don't just start moving, they slowly accelerate to the right speed and then decelerate when they get to the, the next waypoint. Uh, I'm going to leave rounded lines in place because I like the curves at this stage. Uh, the root lines are okay. We can change the um, colour and style of the root line itself, but that's not really crucial. The yellow is just fine. But the one I want to do is to change the transportation. And so we go to transportation for stage. This ticks green to show that it's active. And we select the object. And I'm going to select an airplane. Um, I'm going to get it from the main Vasco da Gama 11 database. And so I can choose what we actually flew across to when I took this trip recently. Uh, we actually flew in an Airbus, uh, and I'm going to choose it was an Airbus uh, A310-300. And I'm going to show the appearance being uh, as it was. Uh, where are we? It was a PQ, a Qantas, Australian Airways. And there it is appearing in its full Qantas livery with the flying kangaroo on the tail. So that's our transport for the first uh, stage of the journey. Now if I go to the next stage by clicking over here on the button that takes me to the next stage, we go to Perth and we discover that Perth is now highlighted green. So now we're at the beginning of stage two. We're at Perth Airport and we're going to change aircraft to a different one. We'll go up to aircraft again and this time I'll choose the subcategory other and this opens up a range of aircraft which are uh, more like uh, small regional aircraft and in this case I'll choose what's a likely one we'll say we flew this next stage in um, a Piper Cherokee that's the way to go Piper Cherokee uh, the appearance is blue. I'm going to make it yellow and red. Nice outback colours. So there's our Piper Cherokee ready to go. And then I want to move to the next stage. So back here to the navigation and view section, directly to the next stage. We're now at Xmouth up here. I'll just zoom in a bit so we can see this a bit closer using the mouse wheel to zoom in. So there's Xmouth on the tip of this peninsula. And Coral Bay, the beautiful Coral Bay, is down here. This is where the whales swim down around about September, October. And um, we're going to drive down because we've got our camper van booked with its little trailer. Um, so now I'm going to choose, this is stage three. And I'm going to include transportation for the stage. And we're going to select the object and 
the object for this one is going to be from the Vasco da Gama collection and it's going to be buses and transporters no um, yeah that'll do here's our little station wagon here we go here's our station wagon with a small trailer on the back perfect for our journey I think I'd like it to be a different color uh, so uh, no I can't change the color there let me see select object appearance choose color of course I can choose the color so we'll make this a nice bright red a bright red like that and there's our little red station wagon with its trailer on the back ready for the trip down to the beautiful Coral Bay well that will work let's see what happens if we just play this here's our aircraft taking off notice how it slowly accelerates and it'll decelerate I didn't do that for the other two so they'll speed fairly faster I'll, I'll change that for next time so there's our little Piper Cherokee flying nice and low so we get to see all the views and then we take our final stage driving down to Coral Bay in our station wagon okay so it's working quite predictably and um, actually very easily as you can see so I'll just move it back a wee bit so we can uh, see where we're going now we're going to go back to the start I just want to go back and check each stage so stage one we've got uh, a selected object we don't need a calming movement calming movements smooth out if you have many many uh, waypoints to for example navigate a river system you can smooth the path so it doesn't look too jerky we don't need that in this one we don't need a fade but I will turn flight mode on because flight mode lets our aircraft take off uh, and reach its cruising altitude and then come right back down to, to the ground level uh, for the landing so that's all we need at this stage I won't put any objects at the waypoints for now I'll we'll keep it fairly simple we'll go now to stage two and of course we've highlighted Perth over here uh, on Western Australian coast and so now I want to just check those options uh, I've got the route line transportation don't need calming movement but we do want flight mode on again for this one uh, and then I'll just go up to stage three and that takes us up to Exmouth ready for our car journey down to uh, to Coral Bay and of course we don't want flight mode on because station wagons don't fly uh, we don't need calming movement and everything else is as we required so this really is the basis of our our journey let's have a little go at this and see how it plays back plane takes off reaches cruising altitude flies across the Great Australian Bight comes in and lands at Perth takes off heads north to Exmouth over some pretty barren territory into Exmouth we change to our station wagon and trailer and drive down to Coral Bay very simple you can see it's only taken a few minutes to pull this whole thing together the only other thing I'd like to do is to go back to stage one and I'll just I will add a small uh, fade in of two seconds of fade in and out of two seconds for that one I'll do the same for each of the stages because I think that's the the simplest one that I, I really rather like it gives a small pause at each point uh, and so the new vehicle appears to fade in rather than just jumping from one to the other and so we'll go to stage three as well and no fade fade in out two seconds now this is the basis of our um, travel map let's see how it plays back now and off it goes the two second delay plane flies across we come in and land at Perth we fade slowly out change aircraft to our Piper Cherokee and off we go to Exmouth and so on you can see this is working really nicely so I'll stop that there so we have the route planned 
correctly, we have the aircraft nominated correctly, we've introduced features such as uh, fading in and fading out and also using flight mode for the aircraft so we get that lovely um, gaining altitude and decreasing altitude to come into land. The next thing we want to do is check the camera settings to make sure we've got it uh, from the right angles and this is all done pretty much automatically in uh, the easy assist mode which is great it takes all the uh, hard work out of it and I'll just show you it's down here in this little panel here camera settings uh, and we've got camera control automatic and at the moment it's set to what we call side glance 30 degrees let's see the options there's side glance 45 degrees side glance 70 degrees 180 degrees side glance uh, 180 degrees side glance in the opposite direction zooming in and out zooming in and out with a 360 degrees uh, rotation it's called a side glance it's sort of a rotation and a weird one called imbalance which I'll show you later so let's change this to side glance 70 degrees and see what happens now we're tipped over to 70 degrees and now we see our plane taking off from this much lower angle and down comes the plane fades out and on to the next one and you can see that's a very simple way to completely change the angle so let's have a look at some more options down here there's side glance 70 let's see a 180 degrees a mi let's try a, one, a minus 180 degrees side glance in version 11 when you click on one of these wheels to adjust the zoom correction uh, the wheel turns blue and I've set it up so that I can use my uh, scroll wheel to change the magnification so we're going up to a larger magnification up to 120 I must say one recommendation I'm going to make to the people at Vasco da Gama is that it'd be lovely to be able to just double click on that field there where the percentage zoom is shown and similarly in other ones that have these active wheels if you could double click on that and just type in the number you want it would be really nice so I'm going to recommend that and based on previous experience they listen to suggestions and implement them in the next version so let's see what happens but for now let's go up to 121 roughly uh, you can do it in single steps like this up to 122 so let's see how this looks uh, in a flight we've got it set to minus 180 degrees side glance and the zoom correction is 122.0 so we'll go across to replay this and see how it looks so you can see that we're now rotating around the plane which is quite a dramatic effect very very smooth here's our second aircraft we're still rotating it's flying much higher than a Piper Cherokee would normally fly and then we're going to come around to the final stage final stage and still rotating around to follow our station wagon down to Coral Bay and it's worth noting here that the text has remained fixed in position flat on the earth and so it looks upside down from here that's easily adjustable uh, but let's not worry about that for the minute I want to check one of the other uh, this one called imbalance I just want to see what imbalance actually does so let's go back to our preview screen and play and now we're following the plane this is interesting we follow the plane right around we come down change planes to our Piper Cherokee up we go now we're still following but from a slightly different angle this is great this would be quite a complex one to generate manually but you don't have to because it's all there in the uh, automatic predetermined system so there we go and we finally reached Coral Bay ready to go exploring the coral reefs so that's an incredibly um, efficient way to create a nice looking uh, route map uh, with the satellite map background the various waypoints shown and three different types of transportation the Airbus jet 
from Melbourne to Perth, then the Piper Cherokee from Perth to Exmouth, and then with our little red station wagon and trailer, we drive down from Exmouth to Coral Bay. Now, of course, I'd like to be able to zoom in closer on some of these things. For example, on the last part of this trip, it'd be really good to be able to zoom in really close on this drive from Exmouth to Coral Bay and to also have the city names sitting up pointing towards the camera. Um, now that's all possible very easily in the expert mode and so I'm going to switch in the next section of this review to expert mode and we'll do some fine tuning and add some other interesting little features to make the whole thing come to life. Okay now if we liked this version sufficiently we could export it as a video to use in other multimedia projects or uh, as part of a, a YouTube video or, uh, or even a broadcast TV production if we're working to that uh, standard. So we go up to the export tab and we choose the video format we want and I want to use the form AVI Direct Show because that gives us the highest quality uh, and allows us to get a really high quality AVI video. Um, the presets are all worth staying with, just leave them alone and we just click OK and we've got our, we have to go to our correct file so I'll go into the Vasco da Gama 11 Ultimate Review. This is VDG 11 Easy Assist Video. And I've got a series of choices here. All the codecs that are installed on this computer uh, can be used. But for this stage, I really like to use full frames uncompressed for the best possible quality. So we click that and our video renders quietly over the next minute or so uh, to produce the final video. We've set up our project now, flying from Melbourne to Perth, up to Exmouth, and then down to Coral Bay here for some snorkeling with the manta rays and uh, stingrays, sharks and maybe even a whale shark, who knows. This has all been completed fairly easily in the easy assist mode up here and now I'm going to change from easy assist to expert mode and we'll now be able to exploit all of the full power of Vasco da Gama version 11. So what can we now do? A few things have changed. There are many more options here. There are many more tabs along the top, including maps, route map, objects, texts, camera, optical effects, tools, and export. Uh, there are lots more uh, options in these panels to the side. So there are a few things to learn, but there's also an enormous amount of power available to us now to really customize this journey uh, as we want to. So the first thing I'll do is change the flight path a little bit. I'm going to make us fly down a little bit south of Victoria here and then up past the bight, up this way and then right down to the south and out to this point here. And this is where we'll come in and turn uh, east and come in towards Perth Airport from over the sea as we did on a real trip just last year. Similarly, I'll just zoom in a little bit for a moment uh, and I'll make us fly along the coast, just off the coast, so we can see the beautiful uh, ocean and various parts of the inland. We'll come a little bit further inland up here towards Exmouth and again we'll come in and approach, whoops, we'll come in, I better come in a bit closer and we'll come up this way and approach Exmouth from the north down along the peninsula and onto that barren looking little airfield. So that's yeah that's and that's our station wagon taking over for the journey south west to Coral Bay. And then we can start to have a little more fun. So we'll go back to the very beginning of our journey back to Melbourne 
And now I want to adjust the camera angles. So we'll go into the camera tab up the top here. And now we can uh, adjust each point on the journey uh, to uh, suit our particular needs. The first thing to notice is that down here along the bottom there's a strip of still shots that have been automatically generated based on the number of waypoints that I've positioned. So for each waypoint on our journey there's a still here and we can adjust the camera position at each point exactly as we want to. Up here I've got a panel called camera settings which has camera points at every point or camera points only at stopover points and I've changed it to only at stopover points but I might change that later. Uh, the camera profile is in balance but I'll put that at side glance I think. Side glance 45 degrees. That will do. Actually I'll make it side glance at 70 degrees for a starting point. So the trick is you go to this frame down here which is our starting point and now as I adjust the view settings I change this now to manual camera. So now we're in manual camera mode and we can adjust the settings and as you move the zoom controls for example if you go into view mode you can see that as I adjust these uh, the horizon stays at 0 degrees the pitch is 70 degrees but I can change that with my control wheel on the, on the mouse once the wheel here is selected it turns blue and you'll see as I change the wheel the numbers actually change and similarly I can change the azimuth angle which turns this around a little bit and I'll do that I'll come in this way Now as I do this in the view window just using the scroll wheel these figures are reflected in the numbers over here the zoom settings over here so I can zoom right into Melbourne like this and there we are and now at this point I come down to the bottom left here and this is our active snapshot and below that there's this little flash camera and so I now take a picture of that and that's our first frame this is how our film will start now if I go to the next frame this is coming into Perth and I want to stay pretty much the same angle I actually come back a little bit and we can see that the uh, if I go to view over here the view tab we'll see that as I rotate this around these numbers all shift proportionately so we're going to keep looking this way and I'm going to zoom in quite a long way we can see Exmouth way up here. Um, here's Perth Airport. And I'll come in even further for this bit. And that's good. So now I take a snapshot of this one down here. And that's now our view for coming into Perth. The next view is coming into Coral Bay. Now at Coral Bay, I want to be uh, facing from the land, looking out over the ocean. And there's a reason for that, which I'll explain a bit later. So I'm going to come back here, we're going to turn around and be coming in looking out over the land to the sea and coming in so we can see the whole expanse down here. Um, okay, that should work. So we take a snapshot of that one. Now I've got to do something about these labels. They're buried under the sand at the moment. Um, and likewise here they're still sitting flat on the ground so I'm going to have to go through and do some work on those um, which I will do. Let's have a look at this. We'll go up to texts and we'll say there's the Melbourne Airport text input and settings down here, settings for the stopover text position is okay. Um, the view will change to face to camera on and I'll use two axes and that'll make the uh, that'll make the sign point to the camera at all times. I might go back and raise the altitude a little bit make it up to about we'll try 1.5 
1.5. Um, and we'll see how that looks if I play it back. Here we go. Oh, it's going very fast. That's because we've... Oh! Yes, we're going a long way. We're very well zoomed in here. And it's not quite what I wanted to achieve, so we're going to have to change some of these settings a little bit. So, we'll go back to camera, and we'll add a few more points for the camera. We do this by, down here there's a plus over the camera sign, or a, a red cross to delete points. I'm going to add a point, and it's here, and I'm going to make it come right back out to about here for that one take a flash of that one and I'll do the same again I'll add another point and bring it over further up a little as we go bring it across zoom out and then we see the coastline of Western Australia so that's the new one so now I've tipped all of the uh, labels up so they're facing the camera and they're orientated in two dimensions so they always point to the camera and are horizontal. I've done that to all of the key airports, Perth, Exmouth and Coral Bay and I'll just show you how we go. We're now smoothing through. I've actually added a number of extra points to show the aircraft banking and turning as it comes around past the uh, lower tip of Western Australia banking around into Perth. Notice the Perth Airport sign is standing up and it also fades in. Here's our little aircraft. I'm going to change that aircraft's altitude too so it flies closer to the ground like it really would. Exmouth label comes up and then we change to our station wagon and we drive on right down through this desert country to beautiful Coral Bay. Like so. Now having got to Coral Bay, I just want to um, add an object to show us that we're in the tropics. I'll just go up here to, uh, here we go, stop over object settings, turn it on, 3D object, we'll turn this on, select object, and I'll go to a nice, um, a nice palm tree, that one will do, and we'll go OK, and there's our palm tree at Coral Bay. So it's very easy to select and choose objects and actually populate a number of objects um, around your destination. There's a few more tricks we can do too. Now just for fun I've added a couple of snorkelers here or scuba divers and I'll go up and uh, add another object. I'll add a, um, a new object here. We'll go for um, wild animals and we'll choose a humpback whale because that's exactly the creatures that live in this area so here's one humpback whale it's too big because its size has not been set to scaled so we'll make it a reasonable size it's a bit further out we'll make it a little bigger and our divers are very lucky to see this beautiful creature so there's our humpback whale so in the camera view we can use the timeline here to rapidly scrub through our whole project like this and scrub through we can see now the one thing I wanted to change was the altitude of the little aircraft you can see I've added a manta ray and two divers and a whale offshore and a tree, a palm tree to just show that we're in tropical paradise so we can scrub through and see how it's all working I will just change that Perth Airport point. Uh, we'll go back to here. I'll go to edit a view and I just want to change this sharp turn here and make it a little less sharp. So I'll move that out to there. Now our plane can come around and smoothly come into Perth like that. Okay, so let's just try this in a preview. His aircraft taking off, flying across the strait, round the tip of Western Australia, smoothly coming into land at Perth Airport. Now we change planes to our little Piper Cherokee. Then we go from Perth Airport up along the coast, taking in the scenic views from our little Piper Cherokee, sweeping turn round, then coming towards the south at Exmouth, 
Then we switch into our little red station wagon with its trailer and we drive down through the beautiful Western Australian desert to the tropical paradise on the coast at Coral Bay and there's our manta ray, our two divers and our whale offshore. So now it's time to render our project to a video file via the export uh, menu. So I'll cancel this and we'll go up to the export menu here and we'll choose AVI Direct Show because that's the one that gives us the most value for our options in rendering for video editing. All the presets can remain intact. Click OK. We give it a name. This is now VDG 11 Expert Expert Mode Video. It's an AVI file and we now save that. We choose, I'm going to choose from all the options here which includes all of the codecs installed on this computer uh, I'm going to choose full frames uncompressed because it gives me the best detail and my Vegas Pro software can easily handle that. So here we go, we click on that we click on this and we're now writing our video to a file and that'll take some minutes to complete. So now our video is almost completely rendered 97%, 98% and this will be found in the chosen folder as an AVI file suitable for importing into any nonlinear editing system, in my case uh, Vegas Pro. We'll close the program now down at the bottom here there's our exit point. Save project before exit of course and there we go it's I'll call it version 3 just to give me some extra options. I always like to save lots of versions of my projects and there's our project uh, all done. So to add some finishing touches to this video I've taken the Vasco da Gama video and I've spiced it up with a few extra shots from Microsoft Flight Simulator X with Australian scenery provided by Orbex. I've also added some of my own video from a recent flight to Coral Bay and I've also added some underwater shots taken by Alex Kidd from the dive boat that we uh, snorkeled on to see manta rays, stingrays, sharks and turtles. So now I'm going to put the whole lot together and now here's the final story of our flight from Melbourne to Coral Bay to swim with the manta rays and turtles. Mm -hmm.